In this Visual Arc tutorial, I want to show you how you can model this building with Visual Arc, how you can define the doors, opening windows, and also extract the details. As you can see here, we can see how many uh, walls we have uh, in each of the styles, uh, the openings, and also uh, the opening style here, as you can see the dimensions, and the spaces, as we can uh, calculate them with Visual Arc. It's really easy and it can help you to work BIM building information modeling in Grasshopper, Rhino and Grasshopper, which I will also explain this, but the main part is in Rhino. You can also extract uh, the planner view of any floor. You can see it. I have extracted the stairs and the openings, and you can also extract the section, as you can see here. Then you can uh, export that to a DXF file or DWG file and import it in any other software you are working. But the most important part about Visual Arc is that you can uh, model building information parts in it. So if, if I just double click on this door, for example, uh, I can just change it and say if it's a sliding double and it's going to change uh, in our model. And for example, if we want to change this uh, curtain wall, we can just uh, hit the enter key and maybe just say blazing partition as you can see it's going to change this one so it's really easy to change parts in visual arc and even slabs so you can see that I can just select these slabs for example with the shift key and uh, turn on the points and actually move these points for example we can just select this point with a little bit forward and change the slab easily by just points like this and also you can move the parts you have in your building maybe a window you just want to move it up or down you can easily just move that and it's going to adapt to the wall or you can just change or move the opening and you can see that I have also defined uh, what we call a section section here you can see it's easily uh, define let me just delete this so you can see that we can define a section and then get the results easily by visual arc so be sure to watch this video till the end i'm going to explain the most important parts i'm not going to cover all the visual arc, uh, visual arc sections and parts uh, or tools but it's going to be a good uh, tutorial to understand the basics how you can define uh, a roof and extend the walls so it's get, it's going to uh, go up and meet the roof and also some other tools like uh, how you can define uh, as you can see we have all of them here you can define a railing you can define a stair window and so on and also define the clearance of this stair easily and produce that building Okay, first of all, you have to go to the Visual Arc website and you can download the software. As you can see, you can get a 30 days uh, full functional of the Visual Arc uh, plugin. And uh, you have to have the latest Rhino, by the way. And uh, for this tutorial, we're going to uh, focus on Rhino, how you can model this in Rhino. But you can see, you can also use the Visual Arc in Grasshopper. Maybe this is going to be another subject in the future. But I want to give you the basics in Rhino so you can understand that. But in the future, we are going to also talk about uh, using Visual Arc in Grasshopper. And as you can see, it's a great software. I'm going to talk about this and model from scratch. When you install this uh, for the first time, it's going to give you a complete tool, Visual Arc Objects, Edit, Documentation and Tools. Uh, by the way, before we start the tutorial, I'm going to use... Uh, one of these templates. So you have to use these templates if you want to have uh, this, the older styles imported into Rhino. So I'm going to use the meters here and let's just double click on this and get started. You can see that you have the top floor, the front and the right and the perspective. Okay, if you just right click on the perspective, you can see that you, the default is on realistic. You can change that if you want to. You can go to the shaded mode uh, so on. Uh, but what I want to explain here is 
uh, how we can manage our buildings. So first of all, I'm going to go to the documentation here and select the edit levels, okay? So if I just go here to the edit levels, we can see there is something like this. Uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger so you can see this. Okay, uh, we have the floor, which is in the elevation of zero. The cut plane, which will be used for uh, the planar view is going to be 1.4 meters and the top offset and the bottom offset. Okay, I'm going to add uh, other floors to this. You can just select the building and add a level by clicking on this and floor two. Okay, you can see it's going to add an elevation of three to that. It's automatic. You can just change that by double clicking and changing these numbers. So I'm going to add another one here just to show you, you can add different floors. And also, if you want to make another building, you can just select this and uh, manage the other building easily. Let's just delete this one and go to here. And if I click on these C planes, you can see it's going to change uh, the location of the plane. Okay, I can put these levels here in my Rhino toolbar. Uh, and let's just get started. First of all, what we want to do is to select the walls, okay? Uh, I'm going to go to the shaded mode and show you a simple plan I'm going to draw. So I'm going to just draw this like, use the tab key to uh, make an auto and go here. Okay, uh, let's just draw an arc. For this example, I've just selected this one. So I'm going to just make an arc here and an arc there. And then we can make another part like this. Let's just go to the tab, uh, reach it here and just make this end. Okay. I'm going to draw all of the walls. Uh, you can select lines or arcs or curves, doesn't matter. Uh, after we just draw this, we can select all of them and explode that. Okay. Uh, remember this is in meters. So I'm going to check out the size. This is 16 meter. Let me just make that a little bit smaller. You have to work on your project big easily and on numbers. Uh, perhaps you're working on a uh, exact building, so remember you have to control the numbers here. Okay, I'm going to go to the wall and select the from curves section. So if I just select the form uh, from curves, it's going to give me a style. Let me just put everything up so you just see these preview thing. You can zoom in and see how it is. And there are different styles you can select from. Uh, maybe you want to use a block work like this. Okay, uh, if you want to use a partition, maybe uh, 79 millimeters, you can select this one. You can make a generic uh, of uh, 14 cent uh, centimeters and you can see the detail. So you can just select that and then uh, select the plan or curve. So I'm going to select these uh, for the main walls and you can see easily how it's going to draw the walls. If I go to the top floor, you can see that it's going to be uh, drawn in the floor, uh, top floor one. You can also change that easily by double clicking on any wall you want and selecting another wall. It's going to change that and you can see that this has been changed. Okay, so remember any parts in Visual Arc is going to be adjustable. You can change that later. Uh, let's just go and select another one from curves. I'm going to select a partition here. Maybe it's just here, I'm going to select that one. Uh, you can easily input uh, a window or a door on it. You can just select a door. Again, if you want more details, there are profiles. You can see the standards. Uh, you can change that to other if you want to give it another number. And then you can go to hinged. You can see we have openings. And the openings are going to uh, work on the walls. Remember, if you're going to work in the floor two, the problem here is not going to snap easily if you just uh, change that. Uh, if you want to work on the floor two, remember to just change the C plane on the uh, floor you're working. Okay, I can just click on this. Uh, remember, you have to also specify the opening side. And if you want to change that, you can, let's just go to the re, uh, realistic view and I'm going to double click this, go to the profile and increase the bits of that to two meters. Okay. So remember, you can always change that if you want to, or you can change the location uh, or the details if you want to. 
uh, let me just double click this and you can see that their uh, alignment, the horizontal alignment, the bottom if you want to give it an uh, elevation and these things, even the opening, you can just type something 30% which means if you, uh, let me just go to another opening so you can understand this, if I go to a hinged double, okay, and this opening thing is going to be uh, defined here, so it's 30%, if it's a 50% opening maximum, you can just define that by changing the uh, aperture. Okay, so you can also define other openings or doors, so let's just go to another one, sliding double, maybe we just want to reduce that, let's just go for here and here. And maybe we want to make an opening, a big opening here. So remember, you can always change these things and uh, change their number here also if you want to make it like that. Okay, remember, you have to define the opening, and that's it. Uh, if I go to the top floor one, you can see that they are also showing up here. That's also correct for windows. If I go to the windows, uh, I can define the profile here. Let's just go with the bigger one and say we want a glider for example and you have to also define uh, the location here let's just change that elevation maybe 0 0.2 and you can just control that okay so remember that you have to again define the opening the side of the window and it's also going to show you that if I select this, it's going to be highlighted here, and you can see it here. Okay, uh, it's based on the elevation. If I increase that a little bit up, you can see it's going to change. And if I just double click this, and just go to awning, maybe. So remember, you can always change this if you click on this. Uh, control points, you can see there is a control points there, you can change that and also uh, change the size by playing with these points, okay? Uh, again, let's just go to the top floor and you can see it here. So I'm going to go to the perspective. And if you want to make an array of these windows, you can just simply say array linear, select the objects, maybe we need five of them, and define Okay, the first reference point and the second reference point, you can see that it's going to uh, produce an array of those windows. Okay, if I want to uh, make the slab, I can simply just go to the layers. I'm going to turn off the walls, turn off the windows, the doors, and let's just go to this. Uh, I'm going to go to the curve utility and select this. Um, curve boolean so I'm going to select all of this it's going to give me the boundary and let's just make an offset for that we can simply make an offset and put that as a slab so if I want to make a slab I can go to the slab from curves and you can see this is 0 0.3 for the slab layer 1 and I'm going to select the curve and hit the enter key so Let's just turn everything on. Go. And so this is the way you can work with Visual Arc. It's really easy. If you want to define a beam, you can simply just select a beam. Let's just go to IPE maybe. You can just select an IPE for a standard of that. You can see the alignment. Uh, and this is the view of this here, okay? So if I just select this part, you can see it's going to draw the beam. And if you want to control the center of this, when we select the beam, we can just go here and say the bottom middle, okay? So that means when I'm clicking, I'm defining the bottom middle of the beam, and that's really easy. You can see in the top floor, we have this beam here, okay? Uh, you can also select a series of curves if you want to. Just to show you fast, I'm going to draw a line. 
like this and maybe just put this here make a copy of this like with the alt key i'm going to copy this bring it here and use the tween curve to go from start to end and say number six that's fine and now when we want to use the beam uh, we can go to from curves and select the curves here okay you can also put that into a layer and here we go so that's really easy if you want to produce a series of beam if you uh, put that to the record history you can also uh, record the history and change the location of these uh, beams update that that's also available in grasshopper so uh, in the grasshopper part i'm going to talk about that a little bit later so stay tuned so uh, we can go further in visual arc uh, there's also something similar that, to that for the column that's really easy you can see that there is this column here if you want to put that you can just define the column and it's going to be uh, based on let me just put this like hp maybe it's a big one you can define the column and also the orientation and you can see it's going to show you in all the details okay so it's based on your project the next part is uh, going to go to the stairs and maybe we want to go to the next floor uh, assume that we want to also close these curves okay uh, let me just explode that here we go uh, we can also define a curtain wall so uh, there are different uh, glazing partition grid as you can see here rectangular panels and so on structural you can change that this is the height I'm going to put that to 2.7 because the height is 3 and there is a, a 30 centimeters for the slab okay so if I just go from curves again I'm going to select uh, this curve and select this curve and define that okay so you can see how easy it is to define uh, a complete curtain wall and you can see that here okay again if you want to change the location you can just simply put this show uh, control points on and change the location of the control points you can see how easy it is to just change the location maybe you want to put that here okay so you can see how easy it is to uh, change the location of that okay and again you can see a uh, pointer up here if I click this I can just give this more height if I want to so it's really easy if you want to make that a complete height for your building and make a curtain wall in the facade okay so if I want to define the slab uh, let me just make this uh, we can just copy this curve a little bit uh, up I'm going to make a copy use the control key to bring it up like here and we can also make this a little bit smaller if you want to use an offset if you want to make it exactly what you want or need and then give that to the uh, slab thing okay so I'm going to go let's just go to the offset I think it's going to be a better one so I'm going to go to the offset distance 1.5 and bring that inwards and we can go to the slab section select from curves and you can see it's 0 0.3 so no you can change that by just uh, selecting a number here okay uh, if i want to change the slab down here i can easily maybe i want to give it a rectangular slab so i can just draw that and you can go to the slabs and select add or uh, subtract to the boundary so i'm going to go and add select the slab enter and use this one instead so this is really easy you can see how easy it is to uh, i want to delete this curve uh, how easy it is to draw a slab so if i go to the front view you can see it's completely uh, on the size of this so if we want to make that slab a little bit up or down we can do that or go to the 3d view just move this down 
with the control key and put it exactly like here and you can see it's sitting on the floor too okay uh, we can also just turn off the slabs and I want to draw uh, maybe a stair here okay so it's really easy uh, by drawing the stair uh, you can define the height the width of the stair that's really easy the step count and uh, we can draw basically the stair so if I just draw a simple line and just hit the enter it's going to be a straight stair if I want to give it uh, like this you can just make an L stair like this uh, or if you want to make it like this you can just use the shift key to define the stair okay that's really easy uh, if I go to the top floor you can see it's here I can put it in the corner if I want to and assume that I want to go up on the slabs so this is also very useful if you want to make the clearance so you can go to the slab and subtract stair clearance select the slab select the stair and then what I recommend is to draw a point from the stair to a big point that means uh, as much as possible you can see it's going to also cut the slab and give you a complete clearance so you can go up the stairs and reach uh, the next uh, floor okay so that was really easy you can also uh, draw a wall uh, like I showed you in the first of the tutorial you can draw a wall for this stair and make it happen okay the next part is also you can draw a railing so if you want to draw a railing maybe in the next floor I can just draw a complete railing you can use different railing here cables fence you can see that glass panels so that's not really hard and you can define the height so I can just draw this by clicking on the boundary of the stair and maybe we want to make it like this so that's really easy with visual arc you can okay I just snapped to something wrong so let's just do that again okay so that was the way you can make it easy and use that in your projects let's just turn it back okay uh, the next part I want to explain we have talked about everything here and uh, there is also some let's just turn off the slabs um, there are some furniture you can use uh, let me just show you here in the preview the cabinet you can use the chair that's really easy you can just Define that and you can see that it's going to be in the top floor uh, Let's just again click on this uh, You can use a sofa That's the start the size of this uh, Or you can go with a table. That's really useful if you want to also uh, give a furniture to your Floor so that's going to also be in your project Okay, the next part is uh, what I want to say is about slab there is also an element uh, you can uh, see again let me just bring this up the bathtub the fridge and those things so remember these two parts is also for the accessories or the uh, furniture you want to use a shower that's really useful if you want to draw with visual arc this was not available in the previous versions but it has been added in Visual Arc 2. Uh, the next part is about the documentation. Maybe we want to define the spaces so we can simply just click on the spaces just for a quick overview of Visual Arc. You can select the interior you can see that it's going to give you a space so maybe space one. Name an area, name area and perimeter or just a standard thing okay. So if I click this, you can see it's going to give you the space, the area, the perimeter. And that's going to be very useful if you want to know your spaces and work on that. Okay, so maybe space two. So that's it. And there's also another 
layer for that is a document. Uh, what we want to do is to use this table to extract things. For example, if I want to know the walls, I'm going to select these walls and just put that here. Okay, you can see that we have six generic masonry walls and three of these partition ones. Uh, the length, area, and volume. That's really cool if you want to have these things in your project. Maybe we want to have the openings. I'm going to select all the openings. Put it here. You can see that we have a window door. Uh, for example, if I just go and select, let me just go for the openings. Select these windows. You can see that we have five of these windows and you can just select the opening elevation and they, it's going to give you, let me just choose all of that, give you, if you click for the first point and the second point, it's going to give you the names of that uh, for uh, the elevation and then the openings. So that's really cool if you want to have that, okay? Uh, the next part, maybe we want to have the beams, so we can go to the table and go to the beams, select the beams, that's also cool if you want to see that, and you have the profile, the length, those things, okay? Uh, the next thing uh, is the section, it's really cool, you can use the arrow, I'm going to go to the default, this is just the basics of the visual art, this is going to help you to learn visual art fast, maybe in the future we're going to go with more uh, accurate project. So if I just click on the first point and use the shift key, I want to maybe have a section like this, a section here and maybe a section here, okay? If you're finished, you're going to go through the right click and define the section length, okay? I'm going to use the shift key and say maybe this is the length and name that maybe A and here we have the section. If we want to see the section, that's really easy. Uh, we can go to the section view here, select the section view, standard, and select the section and bring it here. Okay, it's going to put a section on all of your levels. So if we want to make this happen, uh, we can just go and let's just go to the layers and select everything here. Turn on the slabs. So I'm going to have the slabs also here. And I'm going to use an array linear. That's really easy. Maybe three times. The first point is here. I'm going to use a shift, uh, a control, and a click to go up and put it right here. That's exactly how you can make that in visual art. So that is really easy uh, by using the beam modeling of visual art and we will have all of those here, okay? We just don't, you can see that this is completely, uh, complete building here, okay? So if I go again to the section uh, and use that one, you're going to see all of those levels okay so remember you can uh, draw one floor and put a, a linear array to draw that okay that's the way we have the section a good thing about the section is that if we move the section okay uh, here and just click on this it's going to give us a new complete section so remember that you can change that easily by moving these and getting a new section. That's it. How easy it is to get the sections. And here we go. Uh, if you want to extend, let me just turn the document off. If you want to extend the walls up for a roof, what I recommend is maybe just go to the front view and draw a curve if you want to make a curve one like this. And I'm going to extrude that. So bring it here. Use this one to extrude it. Okay. 
I'm going to explode that before we just extend the walls. And then we're going to go to the walls and select extent. So let's just select the walls. That's really easy. And then we're going to say, okay, it's towards the top and the boundary. That's the way you can do that. And then uh, after the walls have been extended, okay, select the boundary object. You can see that you have extracted that. You want to use this, uh, basically the curtain wall. Uh, we can select that like this, use those points, move that up. It's going to be a little bit messy, but if it's a wall, it's going to extend to the roof. That's really easy. And there's a trick here. I'm going to explain that. Let me just, before uh, going forward, uh, choose the curve here. I want to select the curve. So I'm going to select this curve here and go to project, project that onto surface. Here we go. And select this surface and say split with this curve and then delete that part okay so you can see that we have this surface as a roof and then you have to extend the walls again so that's really easy extend select a wall select the extension direction and the boundary it's going to extend that wall to the roof okay that's really easy uh the next part is uh, a trick which i wanted to, to talk about this uh, curtain wall is that if you want to split that with the roof and uh, you can just bring that up and just bring this up okay because this is a visual art object if you go to the properties you can see it's a curtain wall we can't split that with the surface okay uh, so if I just select split you can't see you can you cannot select that one so I'm going to select this explode it once it's going to give you uh, some objects then again explode it again okay now use the select the split select that surface and split it okay then you have to delete all of those parts if you want to make it a clean curtain wall just going up and meeting the roof so that is the way you can use that and I'm going to show you after it's going to finish the splitting and uh, now we can just go here and select this easily and delete these parts okay so you can see that it has been splitted and I can just turn everything off uh, maybe just turn off this surface and show you that there is a curve okay we can just that curve that is the way we can have that split it. It's easily the curve, you can see it here, and you can delete that. Okay, so that is a technique you have to explode that two times uh, before you uh, split that with a surface. And we can just use an offset surface to give this a thickness, flip that, and give this a distance of 0 0.3 like the slabs and make that happen. There is also a roof, so it's not really important. We can use that as a surface for the roof. So that's easy, okay? If you want to, again, extend that wall, remember you can just select those walls and then click the enter, select the direction, and then select the uh, bounding object. So that is the technique you can use to uh, extend those up, okay? That's it. Uh, the next thing I want to tell you, it's not really that hard, but you can use this plan view to have any view of those floors. Uh, I want to pick up the floor one, select the rectangle, which is going to actually take all of the objects in that rectangle, and then we can just click anywhere put that and see the plan view that is really cool you can see how easy it is to just extract the plan view of the 
building. And if you want to have the dimensions, you can just go to dimensions. Maybe we need a line dimension. We can just simply give this a dimension. Okay. Uh, let me just zoom in and show you how it works. Okay. So that is the way you can also just give that a dimension. If you want to uh, uh, find the area, maybe for example, I have a rectangle here. I want to show the area of this. You can go to the dimension, uh, use this uh, leader and this first point. I'm going to draw it like this. Enter. Okay. And then you can just uh, type this area equals like meters square. Okay. So that is the way you can use that. Uh, or you can go to the dimension, use the hatch. It's all like the AutoCAD. So you can just select a single rotation 45 degrees with the pattern scale of 0 0.2. So that's really easy. Okay. That is the way you can use the Visual Arc tools also to manage that. Okay. And that's it. That's all. I wanted to explain it like uh, how you can get started with Visual Arc. That is the best way you can understand. You can also get uh, started with uh, Visual Arc in Grasshopper. If I go here, you can see that there are uh, three parts here, architectural inputs, objects, and styles. But the main part is here in the Visual Arc thing. If I want to, for example, I just want to show you how easy it is to make that parametric. So if I go to a wall, we can just draw a wall. Let's just turn everything off. You can see it's going to give you a default wall. Uh, and if I want to draw a curve like that, let's just go to a point. You can also watch our Grasshopper tutorials if you want to learn more about Grasshopper, but I want to connect these points to a curve. So I'm going to go to a curve and use a interpolation to make a curve and give that to the curve wall. Okay. So that is really easy. And that wall is a beam modeling of a wall. You can change the style by going to go to the visual arc wall option and selecting the style. That is really cool. Uh, you can just select anything. That's it. Uh, for example, if you want a window, you have to give the host, which is uh, the wall here, and the position. Okay, there's just a point here. I'm going to give a point on the curve, and you can see how easy it is to put that window. Again, it's completely parametric. So if I just change that, it's going to update the wall and the window. And again, if you want an option, you can go to the visual arc uh, window option, give it a style. Okay, and work like that. That's really easy. I'm going to bake this as the walls. So let's just do that and windows to the windows that's really great you can see it's completely made grasshopper but for the future tutorials this is tutorial is a little bit long so uh, in the future tutorials i'm going to also talk about grasshopper and how you can use it to uh, manage your architectural project but this is a quick overview of the visual arc and how you can use it to produce uh, projects in Rhino. Okay, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to our channel and like this video. It's going to help this video go up. So remember to like it and comment on this video and see you next time. Thank you for watching and subscribe to our channel. And you can also watch uh, something that is related to this video, that corner, and see you next time.